This code right here is gonna show you how to make that animation if you're trying to explain the derivative and the paradox within the derivative itself. So really, it's all gonna be revolving around some value trackers here, and you can see within the code, when I'm playing it, a lot of the time it's animate the value tracker. Animate it, animate it, animate it. So a lot of this stuff is gonna do with updaters and a value tracker, so let's walk through it. Okay, so firstly, we need to import this stuff. All right, so from Madam import the lot. Create a class, construct the self, and then we've got some basics, right? So we've got to get an axis on, okay? So axis, that's what I'm gonna call. I've got an X range, I've got a Y range, I'm just gonna give them length so I know where exactly they're fitting on the screen. And just a little bit of a config here, if I wanna change some stuff about the number lines that form the axis itself, I wanna include the numbers, I want that to be true, but I don't want there to be tips. So include tip, that one's gonna be false. Position it, so before I add it to the screen, position it down left and set the color to be gray. Then I'm gonna add some axis labels there, and then I'm going to create my function. This is just some random function that sat on the screen nicely for this purpose. Now comes the value trackers and the updater stuff. So this here, I've got two updaters here. I've got an X value and I've got a DX value. If you can imagine, here's your graph. Actually, no, no, that's really bad. Here's your graph, like that, okay? The DX value is gonna be the difference from here to here. So at the moment, I'm starting it with a unit length of two. I want this to be variable. I want this one, this dot here, to go and meet this one all the way down there. Okay, similar, I've got my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one in a, I'm gonna do this one in a pink here. This X value is just gonna show me what X value am I hitting. So I've got the X value that I want the first dot to follow along, and then I've got my DX, which is the difference between the two to form that secant line. And so we all know, right, that when DX approaches zero, you're gonna get a perfect tangent or a near perfect tangent. So we wanna give that illusion off. Now, as you can see with this animation, everything's moving around and everything's kind of working in sync. So if you want that to happen, you've gotta have some updaters. So you can see right here, always redraw. This is gonna be my secant. Now this is an inbuilt, you don't have to create this one yourself. This is inbuilt to the coordinate system where you've got this get secant slope group. It's gonna give you a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, X, that's gonna be that X value from up there. Okay, the uh, graph is gonna be the function. That's this guy that I've created up there. Then I'm gonna have my uh, DX. That's gonna be DX.getValue. So you can see within this secant, there's two value trackers that I'm gonna be managing. And then I've got my DX line, my DY line, and I've got my DX label and my DY label. So those show the differences between your X and Y whenever you've got a gap between your two dots there. And then I've got my color and length of the line. If you wanna change the color, you wanna change the length, you can do all that stuff within that uh, callable function, which is really, really nice. Now, the only thing I didn't like about this uh, particular one is that it doesn't provide you any dots. And so if you're kind of, if you just add that without the white dots there, um, I feel like it just doesn't look that nice. So pretty easy to do. You just add in dot one, dot two. So if you can imagine, here's your graph, there's your function. I want there to be a dot here and there to be a dot there for when I've got a secant. Okay, I don't just want the secant to be there by going over without the dots. So here, this one's gonna be my dot one, this one's gonna be my dot two. Now have a think about it. It's just a dot, it's always updating, so always redraw it, where I wanna scale it down because I don't want it to be huge. And I'm just gonna move it to a position, and since I'm always updating, it's always gonna stay at that exact position. Now this dot is positioned by the value tracker. I'm saying move to axis coordinate to point, so move it to the screen on the axis and pick this coordinate to stick to, which is the value X and then F of X. Okay, and that's just gonna stay on the function for whatever the X point is. And you can see that it's this X dot get value, which is my value tracker. So as the value tracker is moving, so will this dot and the secant. So the value tracker is controlling two, uh, controlling two of my functions now. And then you can see here with this, dot number two, dot number two here. Always redraw it, 
scale it down to the same size, move to axis coordinate to point, and now I've got, instead of x and f of x, I've got x plus dx, because I want it to be that difference there, and then f of x plus dx. Okay, so it's just gonna hit that particular x point and that particular y point, and again, this is based on the value tracker of dx. So this is the dx value tracker there. And this one here, that's the x value tracker. So this second dot is dependent on the two value trackers. Again, this just so I can get a nice little animation going there. That's all the objects added to my screen. All of the animating is, so pretty much all I'm doing is adding this stuff. I'm gonna create, and I don't wanna to have to type everything out, so I'm just gonna create the vector group of all that other stuff. Then, I wanna give the illusion of my paradox. And as soon as you've got this set out, you can play around with your value trackers however you want. I'm just animating my value trackers out here. I'm saying DX, animate it, so make it change, set the value to that. So it's gonna go from two to 0 0.001 in eight seconds. Okay, then I want to wait. So I wanted to do that, and I want to wait, and everything that, everything that's going to be happening here. So if this is always redraw, that'll be changing, and that, and my secant line here, and my secant, which is really really nice. Okay, then I can wait. Then I can change the x value. So when I've got the secant and it gives the illusion to a tangent, then I can move this x value. So x animate, set the value to one. Okay, take five seconds and I can go well now I want you to go back to seven or if I wanted to put it to four or five or wherever I want it to go I just go x dot animate set value and again this is this x from the value tracker and this is the dx from the value tracker okay and then again I finish it off all dx animate it and set it back to the value of two so you can play around with these values however you want which is really really cool to give the illusion off um, for a particular calculus animation